I know Astoria sounds Greek, but it's not. It's actually based off of, what do you think? Is Astoria the best neighborhood of Queens? Is this New York City or Greece? What's really good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to New York City. Today is a beautiful day in the neighborhood of Astoria in the borough of Queens. And in this film, we're gonna be telling you the story of Astoria, all while stopping for some great food, drink, and culture. Now, if you wanna see more neighborhoods of Queens, make sure you finesse that like button. If we get this film to over 1,000 likes, then we'll explore more neighborhoods like Flushing, Jackson Heights, and Long Island City. So now if you're ready, let's explore Astoria. <laughs> Astoria is located in the western portion of Queens, about six miles from downtown Manhattan. It's technically part of Long Island City and contains smaller areas like Ditmar Steinway and Ravenswood. Astoria was once known as Hallett's Cove and is bordered by the East River on the west and north, 49th Street on the east, and 36th Avenue on the south. Getting to Astoria from Manhattan is super easy via the NYC subway. You can take the E, M, or R trains to the 36th, 46th, or Steinway stations. The N and W trains pass through the heart of Astoria with multiple stops including Ditmars and Broadway. MTA buses that serve the neighborhood include Q18, Q66, and Q101. There's also an NYC ferry stop in Astoria. Our first stop in Astoria is at Bulis Cafe, an authentic Greek cafe and bakery established in 2012. The owner actually used to work in the video game industry before opening this cafe with the help of his family. And they serve up authentic Greek pastries as well as some great coffee. We got a couple of Fredo espressos. These are the iced Greek espressos that we first tried in Miami. And we got a Spanakopita as well as a half dozen of the Lucumales. These are the specialty, basically mini Greek donuts filled with honey and topped with powdered sugar. It's a great morning in Astoria and it's about to be even even better with Spanakopita. It's a big bite. That is great spinach. It's feel like Popeye right now. Lucumades. Mm. It's actually not often you can get iced espresso, so you've got to take advantage. Navigating Astoria is somewhat different from navigating Manhattan, so here are some things to keep in mind. Streets run north and south, start from one at the East River, and ascend as you move east. Most of them are numbered, with some exceptions like Steinway and Crescent Street. Avenues, roads, drives, and Broadway move east to west and ascend as you move south. Boulevards can go in any direction. Woodside, Sunnyside, and Long Island City are all located nearby. Like most neighborhoods in New York City, the story of Astoria begins with Native Americans, but along the way involves John Jacob Astor, Greek people and pianos. William Hallett was one of the first landowners, and according to the illustrated history of the borough of Queens, New York City, he actually purchased the land from two Native American chiefs. He built a small farm, but otherwise left the rest as untamed wilderness. Over the years, the land stayed in his family, passing from son to son, although some outsiders did purchase parcels of land to create other farms. It later became an enclave for wealthy New Yorkers with many luxurious mansions being constructed. These homes had incredible views of Manhattan, and some still exist to this day. For our lunch in Astoria today, we stopped at Sal, Chris, and Charlie's Deli. This is a well-established local joint known for their customizable sandwiches, cash only, and no seating. You go inside, grab yourself some chips, a drink, and then order your sandwich to your heart's delight. Today, we wanted to go with the bomb, which is their specialty, a ham, salami, turkey, pepperoni, mortadella, provolone cheese, and American cheese with the works. My motto is, everything that comes on the sandwich, put on my sandwich. And there's no seating around, so we're actually gonna take it to Astoria Park. Check out how huge this sandwich is. No wonder it costs almost $20. I was like, that's kind of pricey for a sandwich, but now I see why. This is like 20 or 30 stacks of meat and cheese. I don't know how I'm gonna eat this, but I will get it done. Bomb sandwich from Sal, Chris, and Charlie's. This is the type of sandwich that I would dream about as a teenager, just stacking layer after layer. I know why they call it the bomb. Definitely lives up to the name and the hype behind it. Two types of cheese, five types of meat, 10 out of 10 sandwich. A businessman from Flushing named Stephen Halsey would frequently pass by the area and he absolutely fell in love with its beauty. So he bought up a bunch of land and decided he wanted to rename it after John Jacob Astor. This was actually somewhat of a trend back in the day. I guess today they'd want to rename the town after Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. But it was all a ploy to get the richest man in the United States to invest some of his dough into this community. In the end, he only gave some, but not all that was requested. Regardless, the name stuck and was made official in 1840. 
Stein Way & Sons was founded in Manhattan in 1853, but eventually they outgrew their old piano factory and moved out here to Astoria in 1870. The Steinways, unlike Astor, actually invested in the community with infrastructure like a streetcar line and even a company town named Steinway Village, which now combines with Dittmars to form the Dittmars Steinway neighborhood. By the way, Dittmars is named for Dr. Dow Dittmars. The land for Astoria Park was acquired by the city in 1913. It was originally 56 acres and known as William J. Gaynor Park, then East River Park. Since that time, it has been expanded two times. It has basketball courts, tennis courts, beautiful swimming pool, lots of trees, paths, and benches for the people. And from Astoria Park, you can get great views of Midtown Manhattan, plus two incredible bridges, the Triborough and Hellgate Bridge, the latter of which goes over the Hellgate Channel, a notoriously deep and dangerous section of water. In 1870, Astoria was roped into the incorporation of Long Island City, complete with super corrupt mayor Patty Gleason. But this only lasted until 1898 as Queens was consolidated into Greater New York City. However, to this day, Astoria is still technically part of Long Island City. There's some trivia for your next beer party. What's the dilly, yo? We hope you're enjoying this film, whether it be about Chicago, New York City, or London. If you could do us this one favor and hit that little red subscribe button. We're trying to reach 100,000 by the end of 2022. In Astoria's early history, European immigrants included Irish, Italian, Czechs, and Germans. But the combination of the Greek Civil War in the 1940s and the relaxing of U.S. immigration law in the 1960s led to a ton of Greeks coming to NYC, and many of them settled right here in Astoria. The Greek influence can easily be spotted today in restaurants, cultural markers, and St. Demetrios, one of the largest Greek cathedrals in the world. At one point, Astoria had the second largest Greek population outside of Greece. The Museum of the Moving Image was founded in 1988. It's housed in one of the 13 former Astoria studio buildings, which were built in the 1920s and produced hundreds of motion pictures, television, all that type of stuff. For a while, the US Army took over and made training films for World War II. Then they abandoned it, fell into disrepair, before the city of New York said, hey, we're gonna put some funds aside, get these buildings listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and create a museum. In 2008, it underwent an expansion and renovation. Let me tell you, they have so many cool exhibits here from the history of television and films, a temporary Jim Henson exhibit. We're on the third floor right now where they have all sorts of retro cameras, television sets, film projectors, editing bays. They've got interactive exhibits. It was $15 for admission, which at first I thought was a little steep, but totally worth it. We're having a great time. We spent a couple hours on this third floor alone. This room is full of retro televisions. The first FaceTime, which was a mini television with a telephone attached to it. Big televisions, portable TVs, an adapter for black and white televisions that turned it into color. Even an early Betamax recorder. We really enjoyed this museum because this is what we do. And it's nice to see all the technology, history, and art that came before us, whether it be television, motion pictures. It's crazy to see how they used to have to edit. You needed a huge team to produce a movie. And today, you need one or two people and you can produce a whole short film or have a whole YouTube channel filled with travel films like we do. If you're at all interested in the history or the technology behind motion pictures, this is a fantastic stop in Astoria. They also have theaters so you can see independent films that they rotate regularly. You can honestly spend a whole day in this museum I'm not even exaggerating. All in all, after leaving this museum, I feel super inspired. Later immigrants came from Albania, Ecuador, Egypt, Morocco, India, Bangladesh, Mexico, and Brazil. On Steinway Street from 28th Avenue to Astoria Boulevard, you'll encounter Little Egypt with a concentration of Middle Eastern businesses. Kebab Cafe was the first Egyptian business to open there in 1987. Athens Square Park opened up in 1971, but was renovated in 1990 to have three zones, a playground, a seating area, plus an amphitheater. The whole theme was to create a little bit of Athens right here in Astoria, and I think they did the job because you've got bronze statues of Sophocles, Socrates, Aristotle, plus a replica of Athena that was a gift from the mayor of Athens in 1998. There are also three Greek Doric columns supporting a curved entablature. Yeah, you didn't know I know my architecture like that, but I do. Um, yeah, and it's pretty cool, dude.
We already talked about Astoria's music connection with Steinway pianos, but did you know that this area also has a deep connection to film and television? The classic sitcom All in the Family was set right here in Astoria, and films like Goodfellas and Serpico were filmed here. TV shows and films continue to get produced in Astoria at Kaufman Studios. There are a ton of options for Greek restaurants in Astoria, but we heard that Taverna Kiklades was one of the best. So we're here for lunch. We got quite a spread, including fried calamari, bread with olive oil and calamata olives. We got a Greek salad. We got the large. I didn't realize it was gonna be that large. Cucumbers, tomatoes, red onions, olives, feta cheese, and pepperoncini. And our main is grilled whiting fish with a side of French fried potatoes. The atmosphere is really chill here. Everything smells great. They have a full bar outdoor seating. So far everything's been great. Can't wait to get into this fish. Real whitey. A little piece of calamari. More like a potato chip than anything. Astoria proves that it's not only one of the greatest neighborhoods of Queens, but all of New York City. It's got everything you want in an NYC neighborhood. Public transit, great parks, dining, diversity, and some cool history. Peace and blessings.